Paphnutius of Thebes, also known as Paphnutius the Confessor, was a disciple of Saint Antony the Great and a bishop of a city in the Upper the Bade in the early 4th century. He is accounted by some as a prominent member of the First Council of Nicaea which took place in 325 CE. Paphnutius had been persecuted for his Christian beliefs and had suffered mutilation of the left knee and the loss of his right eye for the faith under the emperor Maximinus, and was subsequently condemned to the mines. According to some reports, at the First Council of Nicaea he was greatly honored by Constantine the Great. Some ancient church historians claim that he took a prominent, perhaps a decisive, part in the debate at the First Ecumenical Council on the subject of the clerical celibacy. It seems that most of the bishops present were disposed to follow the precedent of the Council of Elvira prohibiting conjugal relations to those bishops, priests, deacons, and subdeacons who were married before ordination. Paphnutius, so certain ancient authors tell us, earnestly entreated his fellow bishops not to impose this obligation on the orders of the clergy concerned. He proposed, in accordance with the ancient tradition of the Church, that only those who were celibates at the time of ordination should continue to observe continence, but, on the other hand, that none should be separated from her, to whom, while yet unordained, he had been united. The great veneration in which he was held, and the well-known fact that he had himself observed the strictest chastity all his life, gave way to his proposal, which was unanimously adopted. The council left it to the discretion of the married clergy to continue or discontinue their marital relations. In addition, Paphnutius was a zealous defender of orthodoxy in the face of the Arian heresy. Paphnutius supposedly accompanied St. Athanasius to the First Synod of Tyre in 335 AD. His feast is on April 19, in the Roman Catholic Church it is on September 11. The very existence of Paphnutius is contested by the historian Friedrich Winkelmann, because he is never mentioned by Athanasius who also battled against Arianism. Also, the church history of Socrates Scholasticus, our earliest source on Paphnutius, is one of the very few references for him in general. His participation in the First Ecumenical Council was disputed several times, among others by such a respected canon law historian as Alphonse Maria Cardinal Stickler. Stickler's objection is that Paphnutius' presence at the council was never mentioned by the council's historian Eusebius of Caesarea, and he also disproves Socrates' statement that he personally spoke to a participant of the council as Socrates was supposedly born too late to know personally anyone who had taken part in it. Stickler's main argument against Paphnutius' story is that the Synod of Trullo failed to mention the Paphnutius story when they allowed matrimony for priests, which was done, as Stickler claims, under the emperor's pressure. The Council of Trullo, rather erroneously, referred only to the decrees of the Council of Carthage. However, Eusebius does not mention many things that certainly did happen, we are not sure when Socrates of Constantinople was born, and the Council of Trullo might have invoked several other canons from the past, though it did not. On the other hand, there have also been several prominent scholars who defended the veracity of the Paphnutius story. The main arguments were laid down already by Carl Joseph von Heffel in his Conciliengeschichte, and were taken up by his successor at the Tübingen Catholic Faculty of Theology Franz Zava von Funk, as well as by some other eminent historians as Elphage Vikandid in the article on celibacy in the prestigious Dictionnaire de Théologie Catholique, and Henry Leclerc in an article in the Histoire des Conciles. The candidate's position found wide acceptance among the scholars. The original argument by Heffel is available below.